Today's program is about ratios. A ratio is a way of comparing quantities. Now, the ratio of cakes to biscuits on my plate, as it is at the moment, is three to two. Three cakes to two biscuits. But if I turn my plate round, the ratio becomes two to three, or two biscuits to three cakes. Now, on my plate, I've got six pieces of cake and four biscuits. Mm. So the ratio of cakes to biscuits <laughs> on my plate is six to four. But take a closer look. Another way of expressing that is by saying that the ratio of cakes to biscuits is three to two. That's three pieces of cake for every two biscuits. I may have more cakes and biscuits on my plate than Ben has on his, but they're in the same ratio. Not anymore, Katie. I think you'll find now that the ratio is five to four. <laughs> a recipe is a good example of a ratio. It tells you how much of one ingredient you need in relation to another. Neil Nugent is the development chef for a major supermarket chain. It's his job to devise interesting new dishes and get the taste just right before they hit the supermarket shelves. First up, we're tasting his new hummus dip. I've made three different types, and they've got three different levels of garlic in. So if you want to have a little taste, and tell me what you think. So you work out which one we like best? That's right, yeah. yeah. You let me know which you like best. Okay. This is number one. That's very strong. No, that's too much. Overpowering. Too much garlic. Too much garlic. Mm -hmm. It's much more balanced, isn't it? Mm, that I like. Mm. Mm. Isn't that? Mm. I don't know. <laughs> Something with a thumb in it as well. Mm. Mm. Bit bland, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, mm. that's too subtle. There. I'll go for number two. I, I think number two is one, isn't it? To be sure. Yeah. So we're in agreement then. We that, have to be that's sure. got to be the winner. Mm. Absolutely, it's very that's good. The one. Mm, that's good. The recipe for dip number two is four ounces of chickpeas, five fluid ounces of tahini paste, four tablespoons of olive oil, and two cloves of garlic. This makes enough for four people. To make enough for eight people, you just double the quantities. For 12 people, multiply all the quantities by three. But what if you want to make enough for 30 people? Right. If we need to work out how much hummus dip we need for 30 people, the maths gets a bit trickier. This is enough for four people, so how much are we going to need for 30? If you get asked this question in your maths exam, then break it down into two parts. First up, work out how much you're going to need for one person. In this case, that means dividing all the ingredients by four. So, garlic cloves, it's two divided by four. The chickpeas, if you can get it right, it's four divided by four. The olive oil, again, it's four divided by four. And the tahini paste is five divided by four. Once we've done that, we then multiply all the ingredients by the new total, which in this case, is 30 people. Okay, so first of all we need to work out what 2 divided by 4 is. Well obviously that's the same as a half. Half of 30 is 15. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 1 times 30 is going to be 30. It's the same for the olive oil. 4 divided by 4 is 1. Multiplied by 30 is 30. And as for the tahini paste, 5 divided by 4 equals 1 and a quarter. So that means we've already got 30 Add on a quarter of 30, which is seven and a half, and that makes 37.5. The key to getting this right is working out how much you need for one person and then multiplying it up by the amount you want. Most of the food that appears on your supermarket shelves is produced in factories on a huge scale. But before it gets to factory scale production, each recipe has to be devised and fine-tuned. Neil has to know exactly how much of each ingredient he's added, otherwise he won't be able to provide the factory with the accurate recipe they need. One of his newest recipes is a cook-in korma sauce. So what have you made for us, Neil? I've made a korma sauce. I've just put some chicken in it for you to taste. Okay. So let me know what you think. What, what, what are the ingredients in here? All we've got. Mm. Four main ingredients. Oh, it's lovely. Is that nice? Mm, good. Great. Four main ingredients. We've got single cream, we've got coconut milk, we've got cream coconut, and we've got curry paste. Not fattening then. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> like, you've made kind of three jars That's it, of it. I mean, what happens next to get it to the supermarket? 
Well, I've, I've made uh, enough for three jars, basically, and that's going to get scaled up in, and to go into the factory. And it'll probably make up to about 4,000. 4,000 jars? 4,000 of these jars, yeah. Wow. Absolutely. There you go. Just I'll tell you what, mate, I think that's the winner. It's cracking. But we can each have one. Nice. Thanks. <laughs> I'll have this one as well. Yeah. <laughs> These are the ingredients for three jars of korma sauce. 150 grams of single cream, 150 grams of coconut milk, 135 grams of creamed coconut, and 120 grams of curry paste. And there were other ingredients as well, but they were in tiny, tiny quantities. Now the question is, in the factory where they need to make 4,000 jars of this korma sauce, how much of these ingredients are they going to be using? I'm off to the factory to get into a nice little hairnet and find out. This is where the ingredients for Neil's Korma sauce are weighed out by the bucket load. Now, Amy, you're a food technologist. What does that mean? Well, I'm responsible for helping to create new recipes and making them factory friendly and then taking them through to full scale factory production. And if we need to make 4,000 jars of it, how much are we going to need of each of those ingredients? Well, we'll need 200 kilograms of coconut milk, 160 kilograms of curry paste. Right. 200 kilograms of single cream, and we need 180 kilograms of creamed coconut. But how did Amy work out those amounts? Well, first she needed to work out the quantities to make just one jar. For the single cream and the coconut milk, 150 divided by 3 is 50. 135 divided by 3 is 45. 120 divided by 3 is 40. Then multiply all the quantities by 4,000. When the numbers get this big, it's much easier to convert them from grams to kilograms. 200,000 grams becomes 200 kilograms. 180,000 grams becomes 180 kilograms. And 160,000 grams becomes 160 kilograms. Ratio questions aren't always about scaling up or scaling down quantities. Ratios are also used for sharing out or dividing up large quantities, like amounts of money, for example, which is why I've come to the offices of Comic Relief. It's Comic Relief! Starring John French and Jennifer Saunders. Every year, Comic Relief divides up huge amounts of dosh between the UK and Africa. And who better to explain than Tony Robinson? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Now, uh, what's the ratio between UK projects and African projects? It's one to two. For every pound that we spend in Britain, we spend two pounds in Africa. Right. Now, Comic Relief's been going quite a long time now. How long? Fifteen years. Fifteen years. So in that time, you've raised... 174 million pounds. That's incredible. 174 million. To raise that much money, you must have some pretty extreme fundraisers. Oh, people are mad. There was one bloke who went on a sledge all the way to the North Pole for us, sponsored, and he was wearing a nose that changed, and so as the temperature got colder, the colour went more oh, and more... Like he didn't have enough things to worry about. Tell me, Tony, how much did you actually raise last year? Uh, Rick. Yes. This is Rick, who's Mr Big Red Nose. How much did we <laughs> raise last year? Actually, I wrote it down for you. We raised for a record-breaking amount of £35,250,370. In one year, that's incredible. That so, if we've got this ratio of 1 to 2, yeah. how do we divide that sum up into a ratio of 1 to 2? Mm. OK, well, I think we need to do some maths. How much are they each going to receive? To do this, you need to use three simple steps. Step one is to work out how many parts or shares there are. This is really straightforward. All you do is add the figures in the ratio. Here, the ratio is one to two, so that's simply one plus two equals three. So there's three parts or shares. Step two is to work out how much one share equals. Okay, so what we need to do now is divide 35,250,370 by the number of parts or shares, which we've already worked out to be three, so if I just use my calculator, 35,250,370 divided by 3, which equals 11,750,123 pounds and 33 pence. Now, step three. We need to work out how the whole amount of money is going to be divided. Remember, the ratio is 1 to 2. That's one part to the UK, two parts to Africa. The amount of money going to projects in the UK is 11,750,123.33 multiplied by 1, which is pretty straightforward. That just equals 
£11,750,123 to the nearest pound. And for Africa, to work out the amount that's going to projects working in Africa, we multiply 11,750,123.33 multiplied by 2. That equals 23,500,246.66, which rounded up to the nearest pound is 23,500,247 pounds. <laughs> It's that part of the programme when Ben and I have a go at working out a typical maths question, but only one of us will get the right answer. The other answer will contain a deliberate mistake that you've got to spot, so watch our maths very carefully and decide whether to tick it or trash it. Today's ratio question is about Comic Relief sharing out money to projects in Africa. If Comic Relief have shared out £5.5 million to projects for women, towns and people affected by conflict in a ratio of 5 to 2 to 4, how much money has been received by projects for women? Lids off. Let's get working. If Comic Relief have shared out £5.5 million to projects for women, towns and people affected by conflict in the ratio 5 to 2 to 4, how much money has been received by projects for women? First, I needed to find the value of one share. The money is divided between three projects. So to find one share, I divided 5.5 million by three to get 1.83 recurring. That's one share. And five shares go to projects for women. So the answer is five multiplied by 1.83 recurring, which gives a reading on my calculator of 9.1666665 and I've rounded that up to 9.17 million pounds. Here's my answer. I also started by finding the value of one share. Now the total number of shares is 5 plus 2 plus 4 which is 11 and to find the value of one share I divided 5.5 million by 11, which equals 0.5, or a half. Now, we, we already know that women have received five shares, so five times a half is 2.5, so the answer is 2.5 million pounds. So, which answer deserves the tick flash, and which one should end up in the trash? To find one share, was Katie right to divide 5.5 by 3? Or was Ben right to divide 5.5 by 11? Did you spot my deliberate mistake? Instead of adding up all the numbers in the ratio to find the total number of parts or shares, I simply took the number of shares as being three, one for each type of project. It's a really easy mistake to make, but it clearly gave me the wrong answer because the amount going to women, down here, was greater than the original amount of money to be shared out. Tony, we've been talking about comic relief. I feel like I should do my own bit to raise some money for you. Great, yeah, thank yeah. you very well, much. Well, I noticed that everybody stripped last year, so I thought I could do the same. I could just. You're going to take off. your clothes off? Yeah. Now? Yeah. No, please don't. No, that's all right, I don't no, mind. It's not a pretty sight. Yeah, but... We will sponsor you to keep your clothes on. I don't mind, Tony. It's okay. I, I, I'll no, don't. No, nobody <laughs> wants to right. see. It's horrible. <laughs> don't! <laughs> <laughs>